everybody. This is Bo. We're back in the house again. We're enjoying a wonderful rainy day down here in Detroit, Michigan. We're going to jump ship a little bit, go up to Lake Superior. We've got the head coach of women's basketball at Lake Superior State University. Her name is Jamie Puinski. How you doing, coach? Doing very well, thank you. Hey, uh, I, you know, I was doing some research on you, and you're a high school standout. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I don't know if I'd go stand out, but I was all right in my day, you know, back at Rochester Adams. Um, our team was really good, and I was able to uh, kind of work my way up as a role player and, and then kind of get some leadership skills following some of the other great players that I played with and, you know, just able to uh, have a, end up having a really good senior season and, and be able to go on and play in college. Uh, she's being uh, – guys, she had, like, the second best free throw percentage in the entire <laughs> thing, dude. That, that's pretty impressive. Well, thank you. I work hard on it, you know. I mean, I, now tell me a little bit about that memory. Now, back in the days when we were playing basketball, they didn't have the terminology for it. We just had practice free throws, but it's actually called muscle memory. How much? How many free throw shots did you get that muscle memory going? Well, you know, probably I started playing basketball in probably, you know, seventh grade. Um, it actually was a little bit late, but I was actually lucky to have some good coaches that, uh, you know, taught me the correct form right off the bat, so... You know, who, I don't even know how many shots I would, I would, you know, venture a guess. But you know, I'm going all the way back to the seventh grade, probably shooting every day. Uh, you know, out in my driveway and really just trying to to hone my form. Um, and my coaches made sure that I had good form outside of just making shots. So from a young age, I was uh, a groomed to be a good shooter. Yeah, and the one thing that I know about the ladies' game versus the guys' game is the ladies are so much better fundamentally. I, yeah. Every time I see a game at the WNBA or even college, it's a marvel uh, how well the form, the shooting form is. Um, is that by design, or is it just something that is better in that in ladies' brand basketball? Well, I think females have to be better fundamentally. You know, we're, we're starting to catch up athletically, but you know, back when I played, I mean, there weren't too many people that could dunk a ball or. or out jump the angle for a layup or you had to you had to be fundamentally sound and and be able to shoot properly and work the ball around and and be able to help each other out so we're uh you know just just athletically we didn't have a choice we had to be more fundamental now we're going to we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about your mindset as far as getting ready for the upcoming season uh, but first off who sort of helped you along the way to take you down this path of being a head coach well you know, I played for some really good um, coaches in high school that kind of got me, you know, really excited just about the sport, and, and they did a good job of, uh, you know, teaching team chemistry and, and making sure you, you were motivated. And, you know, then in college I played at two different schools. I played at Oak University um, for Bob Taylor, who is now the men's coach at Northwood, and I played for Susie Merchant at Saginaw Valley, who is now the women's coach at Michigan State. So those two coaches – you know, their pedigree speaks for themselves, and they did a good job of teaching X's and O's and, and, and getting me a, a chance to understand, you know, the game and what it takes to, to be a college coach. And, and then, of course, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Chris Dunbar, who um, took me on as a grad assistant right out of college. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get the assistant position one year after that, and, and I'd, you know, been up here following her for, you know, the past seven or eight years. So she kind of you know, she definitely took me under her wing and and showed me the ins and outs of uh, you know the administrative side and, and game preparation and practices and and that whole thing. So you know, probably the majority of the credit has to go to Chris. Yeah, and Lake Lake Superior is a pretty good program, from what I understand. You guys were ranked in the uh, top as far as academics in your division. Yeah, we uh, this this past year we're number one in the nation for Division Two um, as far as academics with the highest GPA. Um, you know, so we're, we're pretty proud of that. And, you know, but that's all groundwork that's been laid, um, you know, for the past, you know, from, from Chris's regime here, when she was here for seven or eight years, and it started just in the kids you recruit and, and the type of family that you want to get kids from and, and just that they're committed to the academics too. Yeah, the one thing that I have to say is that when I first started getting involved in radio, we all focused on Division One because that's what people talk about. But yeah. the interesting thing is that Division Two and in Division Three, you've got a lot of sensational athletes that are playing for the love of a game because they may not have an opportunity to play at the next level. So you've got more passion and more energy in the Division Two and Division Three ranks because they know that this is going to be their time to show, and you can see it on the court. Is that true? Is that what you see as well? 
Oh, absolutely. You know, I think there's a, um, you know, Division One. I, I mean, those, those kids love games just as much, but it becomes a little more of a business. I mean, they have, you know, a little more pressure to, to win and, and be successful, and there's a lot more money that becomes involved at the Division One level. And, you know, at Division Two and Three, you got athletes who are, are definitely there to get a, an education first and, and just love playing basketball and want to, uh, you know, continue their, their high school, um, you know, their high school days of being an athlete. And, um you know, their their passion is not any less than the, the Division One. you know, maybe more. and But it's more of a, a pure form of the game, I think. Yeah, I, I think what it is is that considering all the negative press, we won't go into it, about the recent mm-hmm. NBA issues, which, yeah. guys, if you know, I have not been a fan of the NBA or the NFL, so I am loving the assault <laughs> on those two sports, by the way, guys. But we won't go down that path because we're talking about what is right, not what is messed up. So, right. Um, but what is is that the dollar amounts for the Division Twos and Division Three, it's totally different style. You really have to get into the synergy and the mindset of what the coach is feeling and using the talent that you have. So as a head coach, what are the elements now you're putting into place, kind of your offense and defense setup? Go, go ahead and roll with it, Coach. Well, you know, offensively, we, we do a lot of, uh, you know, we do a lot of motion, kind of teach the girls how to play, you know, it comes back to – uh, teaching fundamentals and, and making sure they understand the game and, and the situations of the game and, and, and what we're looking for is, you know, what what may be a good shot early in the game might not be a good shot late in the game. So we do a lot of uh, practicing situations. and But it all comes down to, uh, you know, working together and team chemistry. And, you know, with, with females, that's always a, a very big part of the game. So, you know, we, we try to, you know, make sure in practice and, and outside of practice that we're, you know, um, teaching everybody exactly how to play the game outside of just running a play here and there. Um, you know, sometimes, some years, your, your personnel dictates that uh, you don't have players that understand the game as well, or you're a little bit younger and you're still trying to catch on. So we may have to call a few more plays, and, and I think that's that might be us a little bit this year. Um, we will be a little bit younger. But, um, you know, defensively, we, we're going to try to really get after another team and put a lot of pressure on them and not let them run their offense, you know, as much as they want. We'll switch up defenses from zone to man and, and run some traps. But, you know, predominantly we'll be a man-to-man team. Now, when you say you run a motion offense, there's a lot of elements in a motion offense. What is yep. your kind of setup for the, the motion offense? How do you run it exactly? We go we go four out, one in. Um Pretty much all the time with our, uh, you know, our center being on the block as, as much as possible, and uh, we've run it both ways. We've let the the center kind of cross block to block, and, and we've run it one way where we've just made them stay on a block and try to seal out, um, you know, and we move the ball to them. Um, but we'll set a lot of screens. We do more screening than we do uh, basket cuts. Um, 